Have you ever felt like you're fighting with your bagpipes? That they're just too hard, not working right, uncomfortable, or even causing you pain? Have you ever found yourself wondering, is it me or is it my pipes? When you watch a top piper, they make it look so easy, performing with grace and ease, producing a brilliant rich tone with sparkling clear technique and masterful musical expression. Everything seems to be working in their favor. How do they do it? In today's video, I'm gonna help you master your instrument so that it's working for you and not against you. I'm gonna help you identify the three main factors that can make your pipes hard to play. Share with you the secrets of top pipers to make their pipes sound great, feel great, stay in tune, and be easy to play. We'll talk about some must-have piping equipment and how to set up your pipes so they're in top condition and some simple and easy things you can do to help keep them that way. So stick around, you won't want to miss this video. Welcome to BagpipeLessons.com, where you'll find the inspiration and knowledge to fulfill your piping dreams. To play your best when it really counts, whether you're competing solo, playing with a band, or just playing for fun, it begins with setting up your instrument properly. Bagpipes with all the different parts and components need careful adjustment, maintenance, and sizing. This makes sure they operate efficiently and are comfortable to play. Many instruments can still function when they're not in perfect condition. We've all seen pianos with missing keys and guitars with broken strings still being played. But bagpipes are way less forgiving. A minor air leak can make them totally unplayable. A common misconception among pipers is that bagpipes, in order to have a great sound, have to be hard to play. They think that a steady sound that stays in tune requires the pipes to be hard to blow. This is totally a myth. Now, you remember that initial struggle that you went through to build the strength and stamina in your lips and cheeks, arm and lungs? Once you've developed these, your bagpipes should be set up for optimal sound and be easy to play. If your pipes are too hard or uncomfortable, the solution starts with identifying the problem source. There are three primary reasons why bagpipes can feel uncomfortable or inefficient. Either your pipes are too hard, your pipes are taking too much air, or your pipes don't fit you properly. Let's take a look at each one of these in detail. Problem number one, your pipes are too hard. If your pipes feel too hard, it's likely because the pressure needed to blow your chanter reed is too high. This isn't just a sensation you feel when playing, you can test it by blowing directly onto the chanter when it's removed from the stock. But to understand precisely what's happening, you need this tool, the bagpipe gauge. This is not just another accessory, it's a crucial tool for diagnosing your pipes and also for mastering steady blowing. The bagpipe gauge measures the air pressure in your pipes, which mainly depends on the strength of your pipe channel read. Most pipers fall right around the 30 mark, give or take. You know you're in the right zone when the gauge's needle is vertical, positioned right at the top in the middle of the green section. If you're hitting 35 or higher, that's a clear sign your pipes are probably too hard. Learn more about how the bagpipe gauge can transform your playing through steady blowing and help you diagnose issues with your pipes at bagpipelessons.com slash bagpipe gauge. So what are you supposed to do if your reed is definitely too hard? Well, the first thing you want to do is ensure your reed isn't overly dry or overly wet. Remember, cane bagpipe channel reeds are very sensitive to moisture. I've covered this topic extensively in another video on my YouTube channel. It's worth a watch to understand the dynamics and complexities of reed moisture. A reed's performance depends on vibration and it vibrates most efficiently and is easiest to play when it's at the optimal moisture level. To maintain this, the key is proper storage. That's where the tone protector comes in. My tone protector digital channer cap with two-way humidity control and tone protector reed case are what you need. They both use advanced two-way humidity control technology and they add or remove moisture as much as necessary to maintain a constant ideal humidity level for your reed. This precision control doesn't just improve your sound and make your pipes easier to play, it also extends the life of your reeds. So, 
Stop suffering with a reed that's dried out, hard, and unresponsive and unstable. My tone protectors are popular around the world and have received awards like Pipe Strum's Product of the Year and are trusted by pipers of all levels from beginners to world champions. Check out my full range of Tone Protector products at ToneProtector.com. So if your Chanter reed, despite being stabilized in your Tone Protector, still feels too hard, consider using an elastic bridle, one of those tiny little rubber bands placed at the base of the reed. This little adjustment can significantly ease up your reed. It closes it down very slightly. To learn more about how to do this and other adjustments to your reed, check out my video about setting up and adjusting Chanter reeds. It's important to recognize that reeds don't last forever, and once you've played a reed for a while, it can reach the end of its useful lifespan, and now it's time to replace your reed. And when it comes to a great pipe channel reed, I recommend the foundation reed. This just isn't any reed, it's the culmination of years of experimentation and collaboration between me and one of the world's top reed makers. It's custom made to my precise specifications and it's the best read I've ever played in terms of sound quality, stability, and efficiency. The foundation read is available exclusively from my bagpipelessons.com shop. Every foundation read is handpicked by me to match your specific strength. I wanna make sure that every read that I send out is not just good, but exceptional. The days of ordering a dozen reads and hoping for one good one are over. With the foundation reads, you know you can order exactly what you need, and each one will meet my high standards. You will love the foundation read. Every one of my reads is meticulously stored in a tone protector, so its humidity is controlled from every stage of manufacturing to shipping to storage. Your reads are delivered to you in a sealed container, and they will arrive ready to play right out of the package. I recommend with your foundation reeds, you get a tone protector reed cap and a tone protector reed case. When you order your foundation reeds, you definitely wanna make sure that you keep them in a tone protector at home. So order your tone protector channer cap and reed case along with your reed if you need them. For more information about the foundation reed, please visit bagpipelessons.com foundation. So, in addition to finding and maintaining that perfect pipe chanter reed, you need a chanter that is designed for optimal sound and projection with minimal effort. Not all pipe chanters are created the same. My favorite is the Infinity Chanter from RG Hardy and Company. An amazing feature of this chanter isn't just the smaller holes or the world-class sound, but it's fantastic efficiency and sound projection. It's about getting the most sound with the least amount of effort. Everything about the Infinity Channer is designed to enhance your playing experience, sound, and comfort. The reduced hole size makes it easier to play tricky finger movements, especially on the bottom hand, where typically the holes are much bigger than on the top. This is great for every piper, but especially those who are struggling with the large hole chanters on the market. The efficiency and projection of the Infinity Channer is amazing. At a lower pressure, the sound projection is still clear, crisp, and powerful. It means your pipes are more comfortable, easier to play, means you can focus more on the music, and less on the physical strain of keeping your pipes going. It makes your playing sessions more enjoyable and your practice more productive. So if you're looking to step up your pipe channer sound with a new channer that combines ease of play and a great sound quality, check out the Infinity Channer from RG Hardy. I also have those on my bagpipelessons.com shop. Visit bagpipelessons.com slash infinity and check out the video on my YouTube channel all about the infinity channel. Problem number two, your pipes are taking too much air. The next thing we're gonna talk about is when your pipes are taking too much air. This is different from when your pipes are too hard. When your pipes are too hard, it means the pressure you have to maintain is too high. This is caused by the pipe channel reed being too hard or your pipe channel that isn't projecting efficiently. When your pipes are taking too much air, the feeling you have is that you're having a hard time keeping the bag full because there's too much air escaping from your pipes. You have the sensation that you just can't keep the pressure up and you're just huffing and puffing to keep air in the bag. It's not that the pressure is too high, it's just that you can't keep up with the air that is going out of your pipes. 
This can be solved by looking at all of the places that air escapes from your pipes. First, check that your pipe bag is airtight. Start by removing your channer and drones, then cork up the stocks. Inflate the bag until you can't add any more air. Give it a good hard squeeze for about 15 seconds. After that, check the bag. Does it still feel completely full? If you can blow more air in, there's a leak somewhere. Even a small leak can make your pipes less steady and harder to play. To locate the leak, look for little bubbles, listen for any hissing sound, or feel around and see if you can detect where that air is coming from. Common sources of leaks include the blowpipe valve, the junction where the bag meets the stocks, or the bag material itself. Look around the seams. For the synthetic or hybrid bags, sealing the grommets with electrical tape or tightening any metal clamps might help. For leather bags, you might need to re-season or retie a stock. If it's a leaky valve, you might have to replace it. Just like reeds, pipe bags don't last forever. High quality modern hybrid bags, however, offer comfort and durability with very little maintenance, often lasting for many years. Hide bags need to be played regularly and require seasoning to stay airtight. That's the stuff that you heat up and dump into the bag and rub it around to seal all the little leaks. If you're a casual piper, or if your career, family, or other commitments keep you from playing your pipes every single day, or if you live in an extreme climate like a really dry place, consider one of these hybrid pipe bags that will stay airtight even when completely dry. There are many types of bags on the market today, including bags with zippers that allow access to the inside of the bag, bags with rubber grommets that allow fast and easy installation, and hybrid bags that have a synthetic material on the inside and leather on the outside for traditional feel. There's some debate in the piping world about how natural bags like sheepskin produce a better sound. But let's be clear, the best sounding bagpipes in history are being played by top pipers right now, today. And most of them are using hybrid pipe bags, not natural leather bags. My personal choice is the Banatine hybrid pipe bag with the zipper on the bottom. It has that leather exterior for that traditional solid firm feel. Really, it's nice and hard like a basketball when it's full. And with that synthetic inner layer that's breathable and super airtight and dries out fast. This means no seasoning and basically no maintenance. And it has a super high quality airtight zipper, which allows you to access the inside of the bag, which is required when you want to use a desiccant based moisture control system. And you do want one of those. My favorite is the dry flow system, also from Banatine. It's lightweight, easy to use, and ensures that my drones and drone reeds are warm and dry. So every time I play, they sound great and stay in tune. Next, you're gonna to wanna to check that all of your joints are tight and your tuning slides are snug. When you reinsert your channer and drones into their stocks, the fit should be really snug. These are the tightest joints on your pipes and should require some effort to turn and remove. If you find any of these joints are loose, it's time to add some hemp. I also like wax dental floss, works great. So use what works best for you, but aim for really snug joints. I also generally recommend avoiding unwaxed hemp as it tends to tighten and loosen with moisture changes, which can affect the stability of your pipes and the air tightness of those joints. Check these joints regularly before playing and add a few wraps of hemp or floss when you need it. Next, check your tuning slides. Your pipes have four tuning slides, but three of them are used for tuning. The top slide on the base road could be a bit tighter since it's not really used for tuning as often. The lower slide on the base and the tenor tuning slides need to be just right. Not too loose that they move on their own or slide too easily, but yet not too tight. You wanna be able to adjust them with one hand. Some pipers use Teflon plumber's tape for a smooth seal on those slides. I heard of a top piper who uses a little bit of Vaseline for lubrication on the slides, but personally, I wanna stay away from anything greasy or oily anywhere close to my pipes. Next, let's look at your drone reeds. Check that the reeds are seated very firmly in those reed seats. Press them in really firmly. And if your pipe maker has threaded reed seats, give them a twist to make sure that drone reed sits in there securely. Be careful not to bump the reed when you're putting the reed back into the stock. Next, we want to look at the air usage for each one of your drone reeds. This is one of the top culprits when your pipes are taking too much air. Take each drone out and blow through the reed individually. The goal for the tenor drones is that they each require the same amount of air and the bass drone takes the similar or maybe a little bit more air. 
If a drone is taking too much air, adjust the bridle to close down the tongue so that reed takes less air. Your goal is to close the reeds down so they're as efficient as possible and as stable as possible, but still have a nice resonant tone and won't shut off while playing. The exact position where you adjust the bridles of your drone reeds depends on your chanter reed strength and the sound you're going for. But there's no amount of adjustment that's going to save an old drone reed that is worn out or damaged. If your pipes are taking too much air and you've played around with your bridles and you're not getting anywhere, it might be time for a new set of drone reeds so your pipes will take less air and stay in tune and sound better too. Remember your goal is a full, rich drone sound that's easy to get in tune and stays in tune and allows you to play with minimal effort. I have another video here on my channel that has a ton of details all about drone reeds, how to test them, how to adjust them, how to know when it's time to replace your drone reeds, and some recommendations for my all-time favorite sets that you can choose from when you're ready to upgrade your drone reeds. Finally, let's talk about the third main issue when your pipes are not comfortable to play. Problem number three, your pipes don't fit you properly. There are two parts of your instrument that need to be sized just for you. Pipers come in all shapes and sizes, so you'll want to make sure your pipes fit you properly so you can enjoy playing with the least amount of physical strain and you can enjoy greater comfort and greater stamina. When your pipes sound great and feel great to play, you're able to focus on your playing instead of fighting with your pipes. So make sure your pipe bag is the right size. Many pipers struggle unnecessarily simply because their pipe bag is too big. Many years ago, I attended a Cayley where one of the world's top pipers played a few tunes and then passed his pipes around. When the pipes were passed to me, I took my turn to play a few tunes. At first, I was surprised at the small size of his pipe bag. But after a few moments, I got used to it and I realized it was so comfortable and so easy to keep a steady pressure. Pretty soon after that, I switched to a small bag and I have never looked back. In my experience, many pipers who've switched to smaller pipe bags find it quicker to fill the bag and easier to keep it under their arm while playing. If you're playing a medium or a large bag, I would seriously consider a smaller sized bag. The goal is to find a bag that is as comfortable as possible to play. There are no advantages to a larger bag. You want the smallest one that you can find that works for you. Also make sure your pipe bag cover is the right size. A loose baggy bag cover can make it harder to keep your pipes under your arm. Many pipe bag covers are one size fits all, which means the covers are too large for smaller pipe bags. Get a smaller cover or grab your needle and thread and alter your cover for a nice snug fit. You might want to get some of those patches of non-slip material on both sides of your pipe bag cover to achieve that feeling of having your bag locked under your arm. Next, Check your blowpipe and make sure it's the right length. A blowpipe that's the right length will allow you to play your pipe with proper ergonomics and posture. Keeps your body in a normal, comfortable position. How many times have you seen a piper who has to twist their neck or turn their head away from their pipes just to reach the blowpipe? Or perhaps you've seen the piper who has to stretch down with their hands to try and reach the bottom of the channer. Most sets of bagpipes come from the maker with blowpipes that are too long but this can easily be solved with a shorter blowpipe. Many pipe makers make adjustable blowpipes, which are perfect for finding the exact length for you. The perfect length blowpipe will allow you to keep your body in a neutral position with your head, shoulders, and arms, just as if you were standing naturally. So watch yourself playing in the mirror or on video and consider whether adjusting your blowpipe length might make your pipes more comfortable to play. Try borrowing a different size blowpipe from a friend and see if that feels better. Also check your blowpipe for restrictions. Some blowpipes, especially on older sets of pipes, have a very narrow inside bore. So just try blowing through the blowpipe on its own. Is it free flowing or does it feel restrictive? A narrower bore makes it harder to blow air into your pipes and makes your pipes harder to play. You're wasting all that energy just trying to get the air into the bag. So consider getting a new blowpipe or if you can find a pipe maker or someone who does repairs on bagpipes, maybe they can drill it out to a wider bore. Check out the Adjusty Stick Adjustable Blowpipe from RG Hardy & Company. It allows you to fine tune the length of your blowpipe and get the exact length that you need. It also has a really nice wide bore that's very free flowing and it has a really great built-in valve that is super airtight. Consider using a mouthpiece protector and a blowpipe positioner like my perfect angle. 
The pipes are one of the few instruments where you actually use your teeth to hold your instrument in position. You've likely felt tightness in your jaw or soreness in your teeth after playing. So I strongly recommend upgrading your ergonomics and comfort with my Perfect Angle Blowpipe Positioner. It's a simple but powerful device that allows you to adjust the angle and position of your blowpipe perfectly so that it stays right where you want it, right in your mouth. It keeps your jaw and your teeth happy and helps you maintain perfect posture. And the Perfect Angle comes with a couple high quality rubber mouthpiece protectors. These are the little pieces of tubing that fit over the tip of your mouthpiece and softens the bite on your teeth. I hope this guide has been useful in helping you figure out what is going on with your bagpipes. Setting up your instrument is crucial for a great performance, whether you're playing in a solo competition, playing with a band, or just playing for your own personal fulfillment and learning. Bagpipes have so many moving parts, it's important that they're all carefully set up, adjusted, maintained, and fitted so that they work efficiently and are comfortable to play. Remember, unlike many other instruments, the bagpipes are really not forgiving. A tiny air leak can make them impossible to play. So it's important that you take meticulous care and attention to your instrument and its setup. A common myth is that bagpipes, in order to sound good, need to be really physically hard to play. But the reality is, once you've built up your strength and stamina and skill, your bagpipe should sound great, feel great, stay in tune, and be easy to play. If your pipes are too hard or taking too much air, you really want to find the exact cause. One of these three reasons, it could be that your pipes are too hard, which it's probably your channel read is the problem. Your pipes are taking too much air, which means you're leaking air somewhere. It could be an actual leak in a joint in your bag or your drone reads are taking too much air, or your pipes just don't fit you properly. That's where you want to make sure you have the right bag size and blow pipe length. Understanding these three different areas is key to understanding how your pipes work and getting them set up so that they sound and feel like a pro. So good luck on your piping journey. And remember, it's worth the effort. The right setup and the care and attention to your instrument is gonna allow you to focus more on the joy of playing music and less on the struggle of playing. So keep at it, keep practicing. You can do it, I believe in you. I'd love to hear your feedback and questions. Please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, check out my bagpipelessons.com inner circle. As a member, you get exclusive access to my weekly live online classes for pipers of all levels, conducted by me and guest instructors who are world champions. And you get exclusive access to my lesson library packed with hundreds of videos, lessons, tunes, exercises, and in-depth demonstrations on nearly every aspect of piping, from the fundamentals of music theory to more advanced techniques, tuning, maintenance setup, blowing steady, and more. And you're gonna get direct support from me to help you achieve your piping goals. So learn more about my inner circle and join today at bagpipelessons.com slash membership. And visit bagpipelessons.com slash learn for more free resources, lessons, guides, and videos like this one. And download my free PDF guide titled, How to Achieve a World-Class Bagpipe Sound. You'll find the link in the video description below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updates when I post new videos here on the bagpipelessons.com YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and happy piping.